Hello YouTubers, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I took my friend's old ripped up outdoor cushions that were mutilated by squirrels and recovered them to make them look brand new. I first took some measurements of the height and the circumference to get an idea of how much fabric I would need for the band that goes around the middle. Then I got to work taking it apart very carefully so I could use the piece that was as intact as possible as a pattern for the new cushion. I used my seam ripper to get it started and then switched over to a really sharp pair of scissors to cut along the stitches, making sure not to cut into the seam allowance so I had a full piece to use as a pattern. It was a little tricky at first, but I got the hang of it, until I reached a spot that had a big hunk of glue. So yeah, apparently this old cushion was closed up with glue for some reason. And goodbye sharp scissors. I measured from the edge to the crease to get an idea of the seam allowance and then took the foam out and set it aside because I could reuse it. Then I carefully cut off the piping because I wanted to try to reuse it. It was taking too long to cut through the stitches, so I gave it a tug to see if it would just slide out. And then this happened. It was then that I realized it was going to take a ton of time to save this cheap piping. But I guess it was worth a shot to try. You know, save the planet and all. But if you run into this styrofoam piping, just get rid of it. I cut a small section from the band and took a piece from the piping that I fought with and measured the width of both. Then I needed to do a little cleanup. Yeah, just a little. My friend told me that squirrels stash their acorns in her cushions, and that probably wasn't the most pleasant thing to sit on. Here is the fabric she picked out, and I was so excited that it had two zippers that matched and were a really good length. I doubled up the fabric so I could cut the top and bottom at the same time, pinned it down and cut around the old piece. I made sure the piece was against the wrong side of the new fabric because, well, you saw what it did to my table. You need to plan out where you place your pattern pieces so the pattern on the fabric is the correct way and you have enough for your project. I was doing two cushions so I had to be strategic about where to place everything. Remember, you need a top and a bottom and the band around the middle and some leftover for piping if you want piping. I cut out the pieces for the second cushion the same way I did the first. Fold the top and bottom panels in half and cut a small notch in the front and the back. You want this notch to be big enough to see but smaller than your seam allowance. Next I cut the pieces for the band. Make sure you cut the main part of the band about 5 or 6 inches longer than you need. I'll show you what to do with that later. For the part that will have the zipper I cut it 2 inches wider than the rest and cut that down the middle where the zipper will go. Then I cut it to a little longer than the zipper. I folded in the middle edges one inch and pressed. This makes a nice finished edge for the zipper. Use a zipper foot and stitch the zipper in place. Make sure the folded edge is over half of the zipper teeth. When you get to the zipper pull, lift the presser foot Slide the pull out of the way, lower the presser foot, and continue sewing to the end.
When you do the other side, make sure the folded edge butts up against the first piece. This will cover the zipper teeth completely. You'll have to move the zipper tab out of the way again too. Fold the zipper in half and notch the top and bottom the same way you did with the other pieces. Then notch the center of the main part of the band as well. Remember, this part should be a few inches longer than you need it to be. Sew the two band pieces together. We're gonna fold the excess in over the zipper to create a nice edge to hide the zipper pull when we attach it to the other pieces. But first I'm gonna work on the piping. We're gonna start by cutting some strips of fabric. I hate to tell you, but you're gonna need to do some math to figure out how many you'll need. I didn't cut it on the bias as the curve wasn't very sharp and honestly, I didn't have enough fabric to do it that way. But it still looked really good in the end. To create the strip for the piping, I matched up light colors to make it flow together better and overlapped them right sides together like this. Then you stitch across the diagonal so when you unfold it, it looks continuous. One of the reasons you sew on the diagonal is to reduce the bulk because it's gonna be a lot of layers going through your sewing machine otherwise. Connect all the strips together like this. Then take your piping cord and place it in the center against the wrong side of the fabric with a little bit hanging out the top. Fold the fabric over so the raw edges are together and the piping cord is sandwiched inside. By the way, I didn't have a piping foot when I did this so I used my zipper foot. You want the stitches to be as close to the piping cord as possible. Just keep centering the cord all the way to the end of the strip. When you get to the seams where you join the fabric together, make sure they are open and put the cord on top. Then close it back up and continue sewing. This is what it will start looking like. In my opinion, literally everything should have piping because it looks so cool and it's pretty easy to make, even if it does take forever. Snip off the end of the cord so it's flush with the fabric and lay it next to the notch you made on one of the main cushion pieces. Preferably the back where it will be less noticeable. You want to sew the piping to the right side of the fabric. Start sewing a few inches from the end of the cord. This part has to be loose to connect it to the other end later. Make sure you're still using a zipper or piping foot. When you get to the corner, snip a small slit in the piping, making sure it doesn't go into the seam allowance this will help it lay flat. 
then bend it around the corner and continue sewing. Ease the piping around the curve. When you get back to where you started, overlap a few inches and cut the excess off. Then open up the stitches in the piping so it's even with where you started. Snip the excess cord away and fold over the loose fabric making about the same angle as you sewed the strips together. This leaves a little overlap to lay the other end in. Fold over the fabric and stitch it down. This hides both ends so it looks continuous. Now grab the band. The reason we made it a few inches longer is so we can overlap it on the ends of the zipper. Like I said earlier, it makes it look a little neater and the zipper pull will be hidden inside. Match up the front and back notches that you made earlier right sides together and clip the sides in place starting from the front. It was at this point I got a little confused. And if you have ever looked at a chair cushion before, you may see the mistake I'm about to make. I was so excited the zipper fit perfectly along the straight edge that I didn't realize that was actually the front. The following steps are still the same, but make sure you know the front from the back when you're recovering your own cushion. When you get to the corner, Clip a small notch in the band to help it lay flat, and you can fold over the excess to create the overlap. Make sure the extra fabric goes in front of the right side of the zipper. Do the same thing on the other corner and you will have an identical overlap on each side. Sew the band in place. Make sure you are sewing right along the piping. I sewed halfway around, flipped the piece over and sewed the other half just in case I needed to make any small adjustments to the overlapping sections. When you get to the corner, lift the presser foot, turn the fabric, lower the presser foot, and continue sewing. This was about the halfway point, so I flipped the fabric over and started sewing the other side. You don't have to do this, but it lets you adjust the fabric easier if you're off a little bit.
I tested it out on the cushion to make sure it fit properly. I was so excited how it looked. Oh, Dana, just wait. Your excitement will eventually come crashing down when you realize you sewed the zipper to the front. Now sew the piping to the other panel. Cut small notches where the corners of the band line up by creasing it. This way you can match that with the corner of the other panel. Match all the notches starting with the front and back and pin everything in place. Stitch the panel in place along the piping the same way you did the first panel. Make sure the zipper is open a few inches so we can turn it right side out. Flip the cover right side out and stuff the foam inside. Squish everything around to fill in the corners. I ended up going back and serging the edges because it was fraying like crazy, but I wanted to make sure it fit before I did that. This step is optional, especially if you don't plan on taking the cover off. And that's it. It looks beautiful and professional, even if the band is on backwards. Luckily, this pattern is pretty busy, so it helped hide it and my friend didn't care. I do keep threatening to steal them back and fix them, but maybe that's a video for another day.